Mara, back to you. Okay, thank you there, Kerry. Well, that was a snapshot of today's trading action, but overall, Japanese equity markets have been among the hardest hit by the recent credit crunch and crisis of confidence. Since the start of the year, the Nikkei 225 is down about uh, 7%. Our next guest remains bullish on Japan, though, and has a year-end target of 16,800 to 17,000 for the Nikkei. Derek Kowalczyk is Chief Investment Strategist at CFC Seymour. Derek, thank you for joining us here on CNBC's Cashflow. Thank you. Uh, given that Japan is one of the big underperformers in Asia this year, why are you still so bullish? One of the reasons uh, is that uh, the underperformance uh, has not been really justified fundamentally except on the currency level. And uh, the yen obviously has been extremely strong in the third quarter of this year is uh, up uh, 8% uh, since the low point hit in the, at the end of June. And we are uh, strongly convinced that the Japanese currency will depreciate back over the remainder of this year by around 5%. And if this happens, the profitability of Japanese exporters uh, will be um, enhanced to the point that uh, the entire uh, Japanese stock market should rebound fairly strongly. Dark, it's Kari here in Tokyo. 5% depreciation, and again, I guess you're targeting about 120 uh, by year end. And exactly. Dalian pretty much has uh, moved in lockstep uh, with the equity market here. Do you see that trend continuing? I think it will continue. Uh, historically speaking, uh, there were times uh, where, when the correlation between the value of the yen and uh, the, uh, the Nikkei, the negative correlation was very strong. Sometimes it was not, but this year it was, it was uh, exceptionally strong. Uh, and I believe that uh, this will continue because of the emphasis that investors are uh, putting uh, on the profitability of Japanese exporters. And, and this is uh, dependent so much on the value of the yen. Uh, for example, over the uh, past two and a half months, uh, the yen has ap appreciated against the US dollar by 8% and the Nikkei has declined by 13%. Uh, and I think that um, the, the strong correlation will continue. So if the yen moves up by 5%, I think we, we can see up to 8% uh, gain in the Nikkei. What about some of the obvious risks, like political risk? You're looking at Prime Minister Abe uh, probably on his way out and facing a serious challenge uh, in Parliament. And also, um, the valuation is still pretty high for some of these uh, uh, companies. Uh, how would you address those risks? Well, uh, obviously, there are a lot of risks. The ones you, are, you, are mentioned, uh, you have mentioned uh, have weight on, on, uh, on index levels. And there are also concerns uh, over Japanese growth itself, because we had the contraction of GDP in the second quarter. And the consumer isn't really, um, doesn't really have a chance to rebound much uh, for the foreseeable future. That's why uh, the Nikkei, the topics, will probably not rebound uh, as much as, uh, as they could as the yen declines. But still, the currency value is the predominant factor, and all the others are sort of in the background. So if the currency moves the way that we are forecasting, uh, the, the, the other negatives, such as the, the politics uh, and the high valuations, will be brushed aside by investors. Derek, uh, would you then be putting money into sort of the uh, domestic demand plays in Japan? I mean, obviously, if the currency continues to appreciate, although you don't think by that much, would auto still be attracted to you? Which sectors look attractive? Um, well, I think that uh, most sectors will gain if we have uh, an index rebound by, by 6 to 7 percent, which is our forecast. Uh, let me point out two that I think uh, could be um, even more attractive than the average at this point. The first would be the banking sector. It's down 25% so far this year, and also down by the same mar down by the same margin uh, since the um, subprime pro uh, mortgage problems in the U.S. Uh, have emerged at the end of June. Uh, I think that uh, it's beaten down too heavily, and uh, both global banks and especially Japanese banks, which are not that exposed to the U.S. market, should recover by the end of the year. And the second sector is machinery. Which which, which is down 17% since the end of June. Uh, and um, it's down partly because of the contraction in capital spending in the second quarter of this year in Japan. Uh, well, uh, July numbers for, machinery, for core machinery orders were very strong, and I believe that they will continue to be solid for the remainder of this year. So, so the excessive uh, depreciation of, of this sector, I think, makes it an attractive prop investment proposition.
All right, Derek, thanks so much then for joining us. That's Derek My Kowalczyk, pleasure. Chief Investment Strategist at CFC Seymour. We've got an SMS alert service on cash flow for you now. Find out where you can get the best trading opportunities from our analysts on our program and then have it sent directly to your mobile phone. To sign up, just key 